It's 100 days till the man burns and today we're talking about what to bring in your fire spinning kit because fire spinning at Burning Man is so much fun. So you'll want to be prepared and have everything you need in your kit. So first up, obviously you will need your fire spinning toys. You're not gonna do that much fire spinning if you don't have your toys with you. I mean, you'll obviously find other people there with toys that you know might let you borrow them but it's much more fun to just be able to spin whenever your heart desires. And if you wanna be lighting them up, you will need some fuel. So kerosene has a bit of a bad reputation because you know it's quite smoky and sooty and it smells, even though the smell's kind of nice. So white gas is preferred, but if you are gonna to switch to a new fuel, if you've been using kerosene all this time and now you're gonna to switch to something else, I do advise giving it a bit of a practice before you get to Burning Man. It's just nice to be familiar with the fuel that you're using, how it burns, things like that. And make sure you keep it in its original container. You don't want it to get mistaken for something that can be drunk or something that can be, you know, tipped on the player floor, something like that. You'll need some kind of dipping bucket somewhere to pour the fuel so that you can dip your toys. And whatever you get, you want something that has a lid so that if there's any leftover fuel, you know, it's not in an open bucket. I like to use paint cans because they have very secure lids. You know, if there's leftover fuel, you can just pop the lid on the paint can and next time you go to spin, you can just open it up and that fuel's still gonna be there. But if you are gonna get empty paint cans, make sure you bring along something to open it with. You can, you know, stick it onto the side of the can or something or tie it to the handle so that it is always there when you need it because paint can lids are really hard to open. Plus with paint cans, the chances of someone seeing a paint can and thinking that it's something they can drink or something they can use to extinguish a fire or something, it's very, very low compared to a bucket. It's also handy to have some kind of lights to put on your dipping station, glow sticks, anything that's gonna light it up so that it's really easily noticeable. You know, no one's gonna accidentally trip over it. No one's gonna spin too close to it. It's very easy to see where it is. It is also helpful to have your safety person stand somewhat near the dipping station, just in case, you know, someone doesn't notice your lit up bucket of fuel and is heading straight for it. Getting fuel on the player ground is a big no-no at Burning Man. You can get fined for doing it. It's really, really bad for the environment. So you'll want something to put underneath your dipping station as well, you know, a fire blanket, a towel, some duvetine. I do not know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if I'm not, but just something so that when you lift your toys out, if they drip, they're not gonna drip directly on the player ground. And likewise with spin-off, you cannot spin off onto the ground. That is, you know, harder for some toys than others, but you will want something to catch any spin-off. There's quite a lot of DIY tutorials for how to make spin-off buckets, things like that. I think there are actually some products you can buy now that are kind of drainers for your toys, which don't sound like the most kind of convenient thing, but I don't know, I haven't tried them. And I will be doing a video on what I use to spin off because I think it's, you know, a super, super simple solution. So that will be in the next couple of days. But yeah, make sure you have some kind of solution for spinning off, otherwise it's, you know, gonna be a bit difficult to spin. Obviously you'll need some kind of fire as well. I mean, it's not really that hard to find fire at Burning Man. You know, many people will have lighters and things on them, but you're not gonna be spinning like next to theme camps where it would be dangerous and where, you know, there's more possibility of getting fire. So it is worth having your own lighter or, you know, something to set your toys on fire just in case you wanna spin and no one around you has anything to light your toys with. You know, self-sufficiency and all that. I like to have some protective covers for the wicks of my toys because, you know, once you've burnt them, they get sooty and just a bit messy and dirty. So you don't need anything fancy. I just use old socks and just, you know, pop a sock over the end and then put a hairband on it to secure it in place. And that just stops all the kind of soot and everything transferring onto, you know, everything that touches it. But depending on what kind of toy you have, there's a lot of different, you know, carry cases available. You could get, you know, bags to put them in. Like if you have poi or something, you can just get, you know, a drawstring bag or something. So just, you know, whatever suits you. The one advantage to getting, you know, a proper carry case is that your toys are much easier to carry around with you because they tend to have straps and they're designed in a way that makes it much easier to carry them. A repair kit and some spare parts is another great thing to have with you. You know, you don't want to get to day two and 
find that there's some kind of problem with your toy and you now can't use it. You know, it does depend on what toy you have. You know, my contact staff, I don't have any spare parts for that. But, you know, for my poi, I have a couple of extra handles. For my hoops, I have some spare wicks just in case one of them gets damaged or bent. And you don't have to go overboard with it. If you've got brand new handles on your poi, the chances of them snapping or breaking is very, very small. So, you know, don't go crazy. You don't need to bring everything with you. Just if there's anything that you think like, mm, I'm not sure how well that's going to hold up, bring along some spares or bring along a repair kit so that you can just deal with it. For safety, you're going to want at least one towel with you, a wet towel. Obviously, you can't buy them wet, you have to, you have to wet it yourself. Wet towels are kind of the number one way to put out small fires. You know, if your costume catches fire, something like that, your safety person should be armed with a wet towel to just come and kind of pat you out if you can't get that fire out yourself. So make sure you have an old towel in your kit to use for that. And a fire blanket or some fire blanket-ish material, duvetine again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But they're great for putting out small fires, for putting out your fire toys, for kind of having somewhere to just put your toys down if they're hot as well so they're not, you know, on the player ground. So have a look around and bring some of that. And bear in mind that if you are using them in any way where they would get contaminated with fuel, you know, under your dipping station or, you know, you're putting toys on them when they're covered in fuel, you'll want to be very aware of that so that, you know, that fire blanket doesn't accidentally get used to put out a fire or put out a toy because, you know, if it's covered in fuel, <laughs> that could be dangerous. Having a fire extinguisher is another great safety item to add to your kit and I know that most people kind of think of fire extinguishers like the huge ones you see in office buildings or schools but you can actually get much much smaller ones that are easier to carry but they come in like different makeups as I think there's like A, B, C and you know one of them is a chemical one and one of them is a CO2 one or something like that. I'm not very well informed about fire extinguishers. So if you are going to get a fire extinguisher you want to be sure that you get the right one for whatever you plan to use it for. The extinguisher that you would use to put out a fire at your fuel station would be a different one to the one you would use to put out a fire on a person. And obviously if you do get one or you get you know different ones for different situations, make sure your safety person is aware of what that fire extinguisher is for so they don't end up just like covering you in something you shouldn't be covered in. It's also a good idea to have a small first aid kit that's kind of focused on burns. So burn cream, like soothing stuff for burns, some bandages or plasters, very much burn related stuff. And if you're like me, you're a little bit clumsy, you know, I tend to get quite a lot of just small burns that are nothing serious, but they're just annoying for the next couple of days. So being able to just treat them straight away with something that's going to soothe them and stop them from being really painful, you know, it's great to have so that you're not suffering the next day because you burnt your hand or your leg or something. I like to have a bag as well to kind of put anything that will fit in it. You know, obviously like a contact stuff doesn't really fit in a bag, but just to keep all of that stuff together, especially because, you know, fuel is stinky, the toys get sooty. You don't really want to be packing that stuff in with all of your other stuff just in case something spills, just in case your covers come off and then everything's covered in soot and it's gross and stinky. I quite like the big blue Ikea bags you get because they're kind of plasticky but they're quite strong. So, you know, if something does leak inside that bag, it's probably not going to leak out and the bag is strong enough to not split. So, you know, you don't need anything fancy, just something to keep it all in one place together. And if you are going to be fire spinning at Burning Man, I have done another video on kind of safety tips and advice and considerations. But, you know, just be aware of your surroundings. Be aware that, you know, you are not somewhere where there is a lot of running water. It's harder to treat things like burns because you can't just run it under a load of cold water. You're going to be dunking that in a cooler somewhere. You know, medical attention is further away if, you, if something serious happens to you. So just be prepared when you're kind of packing up your kit. Just think about any things that you could bring along that, you know, would just make it a bit safer for you. Just be prepared for anything. So that's it, guys. I hope that this was helpful. And if anyone else has any other things that they bring in their kit or think should be in their kit, let us know in the comment section below. And if you see me at Burning Man this year, feel free to come and say hi to me. Bye, guys.